So today's webinar, we are going to look at test safety correlation of CAT aluminum gearbox casing. The test was performed using electromagnetic shaker. The outline is we have what we have on this slide. First, I'll start with the description of the component. Following this, model analysis done by Hannah Elman method and the results, discuss the results. Experimental model analysis, the measurement setup description. The source of excitation that is used for this testing is shaker. Nature of excitation. Following this, we will look at post-processing of the results, the frequency response function, mode, damping, and mode shape. We will also look at curve fitting performed on the data. This shows the gearbox casing and its final element model. The mesh was done with 10 nodes tetrahedral elements, consisting of nearly 20,000 nodes and 59,000 elements. It's an aluminum cast alloy with a density of 4,000 kg per kilogram per meter cube and an X modulus of 51 megapascal and poison ratio of 0.33. The test was done under free free boundary conditions. Here we are looking at the results of the finite element analysis. The first mode is at 573.9 Hz, second mode at 939.9 Hz. Moving on to the experimental mode analysis. First, we start with the excitation of the component, measure the response. Using the data from excitation and measurement, we prepare the frequency response function. Then, we use model parameter extraction techniques to get the mode shape, damping, and natural frequency. We perform finite element analysis versus test correlation as the last step. This is a schematic of the measurement setup consisting of the shaper. So you have a computer which can generate actually which can generate a signal using a signal generator that's part of BMAP software. And then the generated signal is amplified using a power amplifier. Then the amplified signal is given to a shaker and that provides a vibration to the device component under test. The force that is given to the component is measured using a force transducer. The vibration is response at various points on the component are measured using accelerometer. Now the force transducer signal and the accelerometer signal are captured using a data acquisition card which is connected to the computer. This gives an overview of the measurement setup. The measurement setup consists of a component, there is an electromagnetic shaker, there is a finger, and uh, there is a force transducer which measures the force that you are putting on the component. What is not visible in this you see the cable and uh, there is an accelerometer mounted on the rear of the component and uh, all these cables are going to a data acquisition card which is connected to the computer. So what type of signal does the shaker use to provide vibration to the component? The mathematical representation of the signal is what you have here. This is also referred to as a chirp signal or a slurp sign. Uh, test. So what we have here is a sinusoidal signal whose frequency is uh, continuously increasing. So if I were to represent it as an equation, it will be sine of omega t squared. That's the uh, omega t times t. So the frequency is linearly increasing with time. So why do we do this? On the component, we are interested in finding the resonant frequency. When you excite the component from a low frequency all the way to a very high frequency, wherever the component the resonant modes are located, it would respond with a high amplitude when you look at the signal of the accelerometer. So I guess idea of behind using a short signal or a suspend signal is the following. You want to put the same amount of energy into the component while vibrating it in all the frequencies from the low frequency to a high frequency. Within that frequency range, wherever there is a resonant mode, the component will respond with a very high amplitude signal. So, here we are looking at two plots. One plot is the stimulus, the other plot is the response. Now, this is all the charge signal when in a real test is going to look like. So 
by taking the response and the stimulus signal, the frequency response function is complete, computed. Here we have measured at uh, nearly 10 points and uh, all those graphs are overlaying on top of each other for one direction. The graph on the top here is the frequency response function amplitude and the graph at the bottom is the frequency response function phase. So from the FRF or frequency response function, we perform curve fitting and here one method that is used for perform curve fitting is rational fraction polynomial curve fitting and uh, it gives us an output the resonant frequency and the Q factor for the first two modes, that is 587 hertz and 947 hertz. And from the resonant frequency, we get the Q factor, and the Q factor values are given here, 96 and 47. From the Q factor, we can compute the damping by zeta is 1 divided by 2Q. The third model parameter is mode shape. So here we are showing a comparison of the first and the second mode for an experimental model analysis result and the final element model analysis result. The shapes will be far more clear when we look at a live demonstration. Uh, we'll open the VMAP software, we'll take the test data, do post processing, and uh, I will show the mode shape when we get to the live demonstration. Then for numerical correlation, we compute the model assurance criteria. Here we have very good match for the first and the second mode. The final element analysis mode is 573 hertz. In the AMA, we are getting 587. In FEA, for the second mode, we get 939.9 hertz. And in experimental, we get 946 hertz. So we get 0.9 for the first mode and 0.83 for the second mode for MAC. So now I'm going to open VMAX software and uh, take this data and we look at this data more clearly. I'll also show how to perform coupling and uh, correlation. I have just opened the map. Import the data. So I imported the geometry. I want to point to the folder which contains the test data for the test run with the electromagnetic shaper. So there are 14 nodes where the data was collected. This for clarity, let's take one of the FRS. And uh, I want to explain some features of this graph. The FRF is plotted in dV and uh, for the amplitude and the phase, the units is in degrees and we are going from a frequency very close to zero all the way to nearly 5 kilohertz. And in this we are able to pick up close to 19 resonant frequencies. And uh, look at coherence, you can overlap the two graphs. So what's crucial is wherever you have a resonant frequency, you want to make sure that the coherence is good. So coherence is, acts, uh, is plotted on the right side, and uh, FRF amplitude is plotted on the, is given on the axis on the left side. And whenever there is a resonant frequency, you want to make sure the coherence is close to zero. It's plotted on long scale. And so that's the case here, that's the case here, that's the case here, and so on. Whenever the amplitude of the product drops, you'll also notice that the coherence is dropping. 
So we have very good data as this indicated by the coherence that we saw just now. This is a part of phase. Now let me move on to the next step, which is performing curve fitting on this data. Let me take the first mode and uh, perform a curve fitting. The purpose of doing curve fitting is to get the natural frequency damping and mode shape. The part of amplitude, curve fit amplitude, is all that these two have. We take one of the part of. So the plot in red is measurement data, and the plot in green is what you get from curve fitting. And this gives the resonance frequency that is 588.9 hertz, and the Q factor 87.4. And from the Q factor, you can get the damping. So we can look at the animation for the test model for the first resonance frequency. Similarly for the we can look at the mode shift for the subsequent modes also. Next thing that I want to do is Look at import the test data. Sorry, import the finite element analysis data and uh, perform correlation study. So we extracted. We have two modes that we have uh, performed curve fitting on. So I'll bring in those two modes from FCA for doing visual correlation and numerical correlation. So here we are looking at the mode shape corresponding to the first resonance frequency from test on the left side and FEM on the right side. Similarly, for the second mode, test on the left side and FEM on the right side. Now let's look at numerical correlation that's back. We have ninety percent for the first mode and eighty three percent for the second mode. So to recap, I started with um, what we have not seen today is the live testing that is done between us for doing shaker testing on the gearbox casing and collecting the vibration signal. But with the test data, we went through the post processing steps. Once we started with importing the data, we looked at the time series, we looked at the frequency response function altitude and the phase. Then we performed the curve fitting to get the natural frequency damping and the mode shape. And we then imported finite element analysis results and uh, did numerical correlation and visual correlation. So, um, with that, I would like to uh, wrap up my presentation. If you have any questions, uh, we can take the questions in the next few minutes. Uh, for the Q&A, uh, please use the chat box to type your questions, and uh, I will answer them. Thank you again for participating in the webinar.